need God's glory to rise among us. If you believe that, sing it with us this morning. Come on. Father, we give you praise and honor. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Say it again. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord Come on, this is our war cry this morning. Say, oh! oh. Let it rise. Come on, if you need God's glory, say, oh! oh. Let it rise. Come on, say it one more time. Come on, if you're at home, if you can clap your hands, why don't you do it with us? Say it again, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory This time, hold it real long. Say, oh, 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 let it rise, let it rise. Hallelujah! Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord. are open. We lift the name of the Lord Jesus on high this morning.
Come on, everybody. Hands up. Hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. your name. God, we lift your name high. Hands up. Hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name. God, we lift Come on, say it one more time. Hands up. Heads up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. We lift you high. Heads up, hearts open, wide as we cry. God, we lift your name. God, we lift your name Come high. on, let all the other names. Our focus is on you this morning. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your Come on, let's say it in harmony this time. Come on. Let all the other names fade away. Hallelujah. Let all the Jesus. 
we are blessed that God has placed it upon your hearts to fellowship with us during our online worship service. May God continue to bless you. We will now be led in our vision statement. Indeed, the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. And our vision statement will be displayed on the monitor, so we ask that you will join in and read with us. Uh, let us share together. Our vision is to use innovative tools of evangelism to reach a diverse community, generationally, racially, and culturally, in the East End and Greater Bridgeport vicinity for God, as revealed in Jesus Christ, utilizing biblical teaching, dynamic worship, spiritual gifts, and natural talent development and a judgment-free zone, and to enhance and produce mature saints in a spirit of excellence for the work of ministry. It is normally in our worship where we sing a song, the Lord is blessing us right now, woke us up this morning and started us on our way. So it is still with that spirit that we continue to worship God and we continue to bless God. Song simply says, the Lord Right now. Right now. Oh, right now. Oh, bless his holy name. The Lord. The Lord is blessing me. Even in this season right now. Right now. Oh, oh, right now. now. He woke me. Oh, he started me be on my way. That's what I answer. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Oh, he woke me. He woke me up this morning. Thank God that I was blown. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Oh, yeah, that's it. Whether at your kitchen table, sitting by your bed, or just He's walking through the me. house, you just still have to say, Yes, sir. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's holding me. He's holding me. He's holding me. He's holding me. He's keeping me. He's keeping me. He's keeping me. He's keeping me. When I can't sleep at night. He's keeping me. He's rocking me. He's rocking me. He's rocking me. He's rocking me. Over and over. We're delighted again that you are joining us as we worship God online. We said to our members, oh, how we miss having you in the sanctuary. But we are delighted and we are confident that we uh, follow the leadership that's been done by our legislators and by our governor, by our mayor, that we will get through this. Most of all, as we follow safe worship as led by God. And so this week, uh, to our members, you will receive a letter in the mail if you have not already received it. Uh, giving you some very important information as we continue to worship. 
because indeed we will get through this season and God will sustain and God will keep us and God will bless us. Amen. Our core group is going to come and bless us again as we continue to worship in spirit and in truth. times we need the strength of the Lord. When we can't make it by ourselves, we can rely on Jesus. He's a strength that reaches to me and you. Come on, core team, let's declare it. You are, you are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Say it again. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. strength and reaches. reaches come on let's say the next part say in the fullness Father, we know you love us. 
Jesus, so you are my love. You are my love. Love like no other. Love like no other. Thank you for loving us, Father. Love like no other. And it reaches. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. Reaches.
this morning we now worship God through prayer uh, because we know God's word is that God has healing strength God has healing powers as we pray this morning minister Harris will come and lead us in prayer let us pray most gracious and holy God it is again that you've allowed us to come before your throne of grace Father God, we come lowly, meek, and humble as we know how. God, we come just as we are, Lord God. Father God, we ask, oh God, for forgiveness of sins, oh God, because, Lord God, we realize when we sin, we don't sin against ourselves, God, but we sin against you. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you would forgive us. Father God, we ask, Lord God, that you would guard our footsteps, Lord God, that we may walk in your ways, oh God, and that when temptation comes up against us, oh God, we, hallelujah, look the other way, oh God. Father God, we glorify and we magnify you on this morning because you are that kind of God, hallelujah. You deserve all our praise. You deserve every hallelujah because, God, you've been so, so good, and we want to tell you thank you. Father God, we lift up our pastor on this morning, the Reverend Dr. Seal Stallworth. Oh God, we ask that you would continue to walk with him and that you would continue to talk with him, Lord God. That you would continue to be his strength, Lord God, in his weakness, oh God. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you would build a hedge of protection around him, Lord God. That you would keep him safe from seen and unseen danger, Lord God. Father God, continue to lift them up, O oh God, and give them visions, O oh God, for this church and this community, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. We praise you, Lord God, and we lift you up, O oh God, for the leadership in this church right now, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, as, as we have these services, O oh God, online, we ask, O oh God, that you would keep us wrapped up in the cords of your love, Lord God, and that you would continue to bind us together in holy and Christian love, Lord God. Father God, use us, O oh God, for the advancement of your kingdom here on earth, Lord God. Now, Father God, I lift up those, O oh God, that are watching online this morning, Father God. Those that are in the convalescent homes, O oh God, nursing homes, O oh God. Father God, we lift up your people on this morning, Lord God. Father, we know, Father God, that you are able, O oh God, and no matter what it looks like, Lord God, you are in control, Father. Father God, some of us, oh God, are sitting in our homes with aches and pains in our bodies, oh God. Some of us, Father God, are concerned with our children and our spouses, oh God. Some of us, Lord God, are worried about our jobs, oh God, and financial problems, oh God. But we do know, Father God, that you are a God that can do all things, Lord God. And your word tells us to look to the hills from which cometh our strength. So God, we raise up our hands to you on this morning, seeking and searching for your God. And Father God, we know, Father God, that you are able and you said that you'll never leave us or forsake us, Lord God. You said that you would walk with us through the storms, oh God. And you said that you would walk with us through the fire, Lord God. So Father God, as we walk, oh God, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. We lift up our hands to you, oh God, and tell you hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God, because we trust you, God. Hallelujah, God, because we believe in you, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing, oh God. We thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you for what you've done, oh God. 
Father God, have your way in the name of Jesus and keep our minds, oh God, in agreement with your will and your way in our lives. We bless you, God. Father, I know I didn't say much, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you, God, because you're blessing us even right now, oh God. Hallelujah, and for that we give you the praise, glory, and honor. This is my prayer, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me how shortly and share the word of God, but we ask you to hear our announcements and things that uh, we want our church family and our friends to know about. So please listen to our announcements. Good morning, East End. My name is Deacon Dixie Eaton, and today I will bring the morning announcements. Please call in every morning, Monday through Friday, from 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. for our morning prayer and devotion to receive an inspirational word to start your day. Attention ministry leaders, the 2020-2021 ministry proposal forms are now available. If you need a proposal form, please let us know so we can get a form to you. A reminder that all services and activities are canceled at the church. We are providing alternate ways for Bible study classes, prayer, Lent worship, and our Sunday morning worship. Please keep an eye out for additional information about these changes. They will be sent out through different means of communications as it becomes available. Do not forget that you can find us on the Facebook page, Charlie Stallworth, for our worship live streams. And you can check out Charlie Stallworth TV on your YouTube for current and past worship services. Also, please feel free to share this information with your friends and family, as it is an easy way to invite them to worship with us. Please do not forget, we have Givelify and Cash App available for you to send your tithes, offerings, and any other donations. To give through Givelify, simply download the app and search East End Baptist Tabernacle, 548 Central Avenue, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06607. To give through Cash App, simply send the donation to cash tag EEBTC. You are welcome to mail in or drop off your tithes and offerings. Please contact Trustee Steve Dillon for more information and to schedule this. As we deal with the restrictions and precautionary measures associated with the coronavirus, we want you to know that the diaconate ministry is available in caring for the congregation's spiritual needs. Please feel free to contact your deacon or simply call the church and leave a message to find out who is your deacon. Using the words of our pastor to encourage us during this time, we will survive. We are not defeated in this challenging time. And as it is written in 2 Corinthians, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We will not only survive, but we will thrive. Again, this is Deacon Dixie Eaton. Please enjoy the rest of the worship service.
As we continue to worship God, I want to take a moment to thank our leadership of our church for continu continuing to work hard and to lead us through this uh, process. Uh, many of you, if you have not already, have not already been contacted by your deacon team, will be contacted by your deacon team as we want to stay in contact with our membership and with our friends to let you know that we are here for you, to provide for you, and to help lead through this particular season. We also ask you that as you continue to reflect on the life of the church, that we do not forget that the church is sustained by our spirit of giving and by our, our obedience to the word of God. So we ask you and remind you that there are several ways to give to the church. Uh, you can give through Cash App, E-E-B-T-C. You can give through the Cash App that's, that's shown on your screen right now. We ask you that you can use the Cash App uh, to give. That you can also give through Givelify. Uh, Givelify is a, an app that's used by the church, and uh, we have used it in the past. We continue to use it. So either uh, the Cash App, which is now displayed on your screen, uh, EEBTC, or you can use Givelify, East End Baptist Tabernacle Church, or you can also mail it in, 548 Central Avenue, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, 06607. All right, as so many have said, they like giving the old fashioned way. Uh, Trustee Steve Dillon will be here at the church most evenings, and you can feel free to drop your offering in the box. What's most important is that we give and that we give now, not to be pressured for this moment, but to know we're going to get through this. And as we get through this, the church wants to come out stronger than before because there will be many needs we have to minister into. So we ask you to take a few seconds, even now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do mine right now as the musicians just give us some music. Uh, to take your cash out, uh, to take Givelify out, to take whatever means you have. Uh, those who want to give to the church and do it right now. So I'm going to ask the musicians to play as I give my offering. And many of you who are online will want to give your offering. As we continue to worship God, for those of you who have not finished your offering, continue to uh, complete it and join us uh, in this moment. Uh, also, this is an awesome time uh, to invite people to worship, not into the sanctuary, but all of your friends on Facebook. I know Facebook is just being overloaded right now because most persons have gone to Facebook for their worship service. But remember, this is a new invite to tell your friend to join us on Facebook Live. After Facebook Live, the sermon will be, the worship will be posted up to uh, YouTube, but asking them to join us live. Just invite your friends and tell your friends that your church is on Facebook Live having a word for this particular season. 
because it is in this season that we continue to do what we are doing. When we are here, we know what we do, but when we are not here, we worship it online. We still have a worship service in which we laugh a little, learn a lot, grow exponentially, worship with enthusiasm, and make an impact. We still do that. We still do that. As a matter of fact, as it is being displayed on your screen, I'm just going to ask you just to say it with me because it is even online as we worship together. We continue in our worship experience to laugh a little, to learn a lot, to grow exponentially, to worship with enthusiasm, and to make an impact. And it is to that, that end that our sermon series for 2020 is to give God a yes because we know God's will for us is much better than anything we can ever imagine. And so we say to God, overflow in this place. We need you in this place. Have your way in this place. Overflow, overflow in this place. In this place. Have your way. Have your way. In this place. In this place. We want more. We Have your way. Have your way. Come on, one more time, one more time. Overflow. Overflow. In this place. In this place. Have your way. Have your way. In this place. In this place. We want more. We want more. In this place. In this place. Have your way. Without you, without you, oh my God, we can't, we can't talk. Without you, without you, can't live. We can't live. Without you, without you, have your way. Have your way. Overflow. Your way. Have your way in this place. In this place. Yeah. We want more in this place. In this place. Have your way. Have your God, way. we know we have some stuff in us that you have to get out of us. So if it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Take it out of me. Oh my God. If it's, if it's not, not pleasing to you, think it out of me. Take it out of me. Oh yeah. If it's, if not, it's not pleasing to you, think it out of me. Take it out of me. Have your way. Have your way. Overflow. 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 Oh my God. Had their own moan. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Have your way. Have your way. Our text for the morning is 2nd Kings chapter 7 verses 3 through 11. 2nd Kings chapter 7 verses 3 through 11. And it reads, Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, Why stand here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of their men and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. At dusk, they got up and went to the camp of their men. 
When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused their men to hear the sound of the chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said one to another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. Then they took silver, gold, and clothes and went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, what were what we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news, and we're keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. So let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. So they went and called out to the city gatekeepers and told them. We went into the Armenian camp, and no one was there, not a sign of anyone, only tethered horses and donkeys, and the tents left just as they were. The gatekeeper shouted the news, and it was reported within the palace. And just again, those first few verses. Now, there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of their men and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. Eternal God, we thank you again for your word and for this blessed opportunity to share your word using this technology. We pray for your people, O oh God, that even in these days, these moments, that we will hear you afresh because you're not silent and this virus is not new to you. And you are still the same God today as you were last year. So God, we thank you and we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This text this morning, I want to tag with this title, Movement Despite Confinement. Right. Movement Despite Confinement. Uh, this subject would almost fall into the category of that linguistic phrase that we call an oxymoron, which is a figure of speech in which apparently two terms that don't match are used in conjunction. It is like saying we are having a hot, chilly day, or saying someone is a pathological liar who always tells the truth, or making a reference to a person who's talkative but quiet. The same applies to this phrase, movement despite confinement. The very notion of something being in a state of confinement refers to something being held limited in space, trapped, restrained hindered in flexibility, enclosed, and yes, quarantined. Yet movement suggests flexibility, transferable, transportable, motion, velocity, maneuverability, and locomotion. Therefore, it seems impossible to have the two, movement and confinement, at the same time. We, see, we, we seem to either have the option of being trapped, that's confinement, or to keep on stepping, that's movement. We don't seem to have both. We seem to have one or the other. I repeat, we seem to either have the option of being trapped, which is confinement, or we have the option to keep on stepping, which is movement. Yet we see each at work in our text today. The issue of confinement is in the text for today. Confinement in the text is famine in the land, there's a lack of food. And the reality of there being a lack of food means there are other problems. Where there's no food, there's no nutrition. Where there's no food, there are health care challenges. Where there's no food, peace is absent. Where there's no food, violence is a threat. Where there's no food, war is possible. And where there is no food, death will happen. If you do not eat, you will die. And many of us know how cranky we get when we want to eat. The confinement in our text is famine. Reading 
the context of this story, the chapter preceding the chapter we read. 2 Kings 6 and 25 says there was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver. Don't know who would be buying a donkey's head, but that's what the text says. And a quarter of a cab of seed pods for five shekels. And a couple more verses down, the text even gives us a more stomach-wrenching example of how severe the famine in the land was. As a matter of fact, the lady gives the account in the text. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 28 through 29, she says, Then he asked her, What's the matter? She answered, This woman said to me, Give up your son so we may eat him today, and tomorrow we will eat my son. So we cooked my son and ate him. The next day I said to her, give up your son so we may eat him. But she had hidden him. That's famine that has turned into human cannibalism. The eating the flesh of internal organs. However, for the four men I read about in our text, the famine eve is even more severe because they have leprosy, which could be any of such skin conditions mentioned in the Bible. But the four men in our text were not only starving because of the famine in the land, but they also had leprosy, which confined them even more to their situations. Therefore, the confinement of famine experienced by the four men is worsened by their leprosy. Confinement and discomfort. Confinement and inconvenience. Confinement and frustration. Not just confined, but discomforted. Not just confined, but inconvenienced. Not just confined, but frustrated. We, for the first time in our existence, for those of us who are alive, is experiencing confinement like never before. There have been other viruses and other illnesses and other social events that have shaken us, that have scared us, and that have even partially paralyzed us. But nothing in recent existential memory has confined us like this present coronavirus. The coronavirus has given us the experience of confinement. Can't go to the parks like we used to? Confinement. Broadway shows are darkened? Confinement. Malls are partially empty or closed? Confinement. Cities are on lockdown? Confinement. No more flexibility of having meals at your favorite restaurant? Confinement. This past week, I called in an order, and when I went to pick it up, there was a sign on the door, my favorite restaurant, that said, please come in and order and return to your car and wait for your order to be prepared. Confinement. Went to the grocery store to pick up some items, and the guy was telling customers, only one case of water per purchase. Confinement. And who in the ham and eggs would have ever thought that toilet tissue, bathroom tissue would be hard to, to find? Confinement. Federal governments with limited crews, state governments and other companies encouraging people to work from home and only using essential personnel. That's confinement. And like the famine that confined the lepers in our text and their leprosy that even more complicated their confinement, we too have further complications. The coronavirus confinement is worsened by our social and economic challenges. Not only does the coronavirus confine, but also now it forces people into positions in which businesses, business owners fear losing their company. Waitress and waiters and hotel workers and others who not only depend on hourly wages, but tips are concerned about paying daycare and buying groceries and affording the rent with the average American ha not having much saved. It is not just a coronavirus, but it is also the additional complications that produce further confinement. Yeah. Because all of us know we seem to trust God just a little better when we know the rent gonna be paid, the mortgage gonna be paid, groceries going to be in the house. There's not just the confinement of the coronavirus, but all of the other social and economic challenges that piled upon it. H however, I'm a preacher of the gospel. I'm a believer in God. Therefore, I still believe. I still believe that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I still believe 
that God will supply our needs according to God's riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I still believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I still believe that they that wait upon the Lord, God shall renew their strength. I go to bed and wake up with belief in my mind that the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard what God has in store for those who love him. I still walk and talk with my heart beating with the rhythm that says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to God's purpose. That therefore, in the midst of confinement, I must seek out available responses. And the one I see in the text is called movement. Second Kings chapter 7 verses 3 through 4. Now there were four men with the leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They, they said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there and we will die. If we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. You see, just to wait around to die is not an option. Just to think there's no way out is not an option. Just to believe that we will always be like this is not an option. Rather, for these four men dealing with the confinement of famine worsened by leprosy, they began to dream. They began to plan and they began to consider options. They began to talk about their possible tomorrow. Yeah. Though death may come, let us not just sit here and wait on it. Let's get up and do something. They engaged in movement. While we're shut up in our homes, away from our favorite restaurants, not allowed to party with our friends without the option of working out in gyms or fellowshipping and worshiping and running around the church. Even though we don't have that option, we can still start to dream. We can still think. We can still plan. That's movement. Th this is a good time to read a book. That's movement. Yes, watch CNN and other news outlets, but don't do it all day. You use your time to learn a new skill. That's movement. Call someone on the phone and have a prayer with them. That's movement. Get out and take a walk along. That's movement. Prepare a new dish. That's movement. Think about what you want to do when this crisis is over. That's movement. Think and make a plan how you will save money so if something like this happens again, you'll be in a slightly different position. That's movement. Forgive someone you need to forgive. That's movement. This is a good time to dream, to hope, to plan, not just to sit around and talk all day about how bad things are. During this period, let us begin to dream, to plan, to consider other options for life and career, and to talk about our possible tomorrow, because that's called movement despite confinement. Because the lepers, despite their confinement, have movement. Later, when it was time to act, when they could place their physicality with their mentality and their actions with their plan, the end result of their movement, despite confinement, they found opportunity. They did not find death. They found opportunity. They found an opportunity to help themselves, which is personal help. And they found an opportunity to help others, which is community help. Yes, I want to help you, but I want to help myself too. They found an opportunity to help themselves, personal help. And they found an opportunity to help others, community help. An opportunity to help others, we see it, uh, I mean, opportunity to help themselves. We see it in 2 Corinthians 7, 5 and 8. At dusk they got up and went into the camp of their men. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. But the Lord had caused our men to hear the sound of trap. Uh, chariots and horses and a great army and so they said one to another look the king has gotten with the high tide Egyptian to come in and to destroy us let's get out of here but when they left they left everything that these four men could take but they also found an opportunity to help others they said what we're doing just to help ourselves is not enough in second kings chapter 7 verses 9 through 11 they said that's not enough but we can help others listen we have to have movement despite confinement. Yes, spend time being healthy. Wash your hands. Keep your hands out your face. 
wipe down surfaces, don't shake hands, don't hug, cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. And if you're even thinking about kissing, you better know that you know that you know that you know you know. But don't let this time go by and you have not used this time being productive, planning for the future. Don't come out the same way you went in. Don't get caught off guard going in as we did and remain off guard coming out. Please use everything within your power and possession to get better during this season. Don't let the time go by and you have not spent some time but rather I say again, as this day go by, dream, plan, consider other options, talk about your tomorrow. And when you do, you will find the opportunity to help yourself and you will find the opportunity to help others and God will be glorified. One of my favorite movies, I believe it is the, the, the all time movie. I, be, I believe it's like at least the number one movie in my book. It's Apollo 13. And in Apollo 13, I'm sure those who are at home online are saying, oh my goodness, another Apollo 13 story. But this one, Apollo 13, we know the Apollo 13 uh, spacecraft goes into space and, and there's an accident that happens that praise Houston, we got problems. It's very notorious, they known. But one thing that happens in the movie, I went back and watched it again just this week. One thing that happened in the movie that after the accident happened, someone in the control center said, this would be the greatest accident in NASA's history. But the flight deck controller corrected him and said, I beg to differ with you. This would be our finest hour. As you go through this coronavirus and we all get through, you can look at it as only confinement, or you can look at it, and out of this, some movement would happen. And we would be able to look back and say, this was our finest hour. It was when I was shut up in my home and I read a book that changed my life. It was when I was shut up in my home that I forgave somebody that transformed my life. It was when I was shut up in my home that I decided that I was going to write some goals and a vision for the future. It was when I was shut up in my home, I decided I was not going to any longer just try to be depressed, but rather I was going to step up and wait for the doors to happen because the sun will shine again. Yeah. Night will not last forever. Yeah. This will be our fine hours and we have to set like our ancestors right on King yeah. Jesus, right on Emmanuel well. So it is in this moment that we ask God to give us movement despite confinement. Eternal God, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. We glorify your name. We have distance now between people. But while we are having this particular moment, let us not shut down on our dreams, on our plans, and on our vision, and on our relationship with you. Let us think again and engage in, engage in movement. Lord, we thank you, and we bless you. So we ask you afresh to overflow in this place, to have your way in this place. It is in the name marvelous name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Without you, without you, oh my God, we can't talk, we can't talk, without you, without you, we can't live, we can't live, without you, without you, have your way.
If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing, break it out of me. Oh my God, if it's not pleasing to you, break it out of me. If it's not pleasing, take it out of me. Have your way. Worshiping with us today, this worship experience will later be loaded on, uploaded to YouTube. You will be able to view it again and to view it in the coming weeks. It was also earlier in our worship today uh, that we mentioned our giving because normally at this particular time we would give in our worship service. But I re remind you and ask you if this worship has been a blessing to you to consider sowing a seed because we want to be strong as a church as we come out of this because we know the need will be even greater. Minister, the people will be even greater. You'll be able to use Cash App to make your contributions, which is E-E-B-T-C, uh, that will be demonstrated on your monitors. You can use Cash App. Also, you can use Givelify and Givelify. Uh, you can use East End Baptist Tabernacle Church. Also, feel free to drop it in the mail, 548 Central Avenue, 548 Central Avenue, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06607. We pray that you will have a great day and a marvelous day. And remember, in the midst of your confinement, you still have movement. We share with you now our final selection as we depart and have impact in the world. Help us, help us to see. Come down, help us to see. Help us, help us to see. We come to pray. We come. We come to pray. We come. We come to pray. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to worship in spirit and in truth. We remain with you as we leave this place, but never your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. <laughs>